from the Radio Constructor Magazine, July 1969, page 764. 23 years ago, using their service gratuities, two brothers, Mr. Alan Sproxton and Mr. Colin Sproxton, opened a radio and television shop, Home Radio, the name being chosen by their father. The firm, still flourishing, has in the last 10 years made a significant change. Although outwardly still a conventional radio and television shop, there has grown up an organization for the sale of electronic components by mail order which has made the name Home Radio and the town of Mitcham known all over the world. The vast increase in the volume of mail order business brought many problems, the greatest being the need for more space in which to stock the many thousands of items offered in their well-known and excellently produced catalogue. For three and a half years, a search for suitable premises was carried out with many consequent disappointments. Finally, the solution to the problem was found only 400 yards away from the original shop in London Road, the top floor of a new office block at 240 London Road, having 2,400 square feet of space. To celebrate the opening of the new premises and to afford the opportunity to exhibit Bulgan's new mobile display van, Mr. Sproxton and Mr. Layton, Mr. Colin Sproxton retired five years ago, the business now being carried on by Mr. Alan Sproxton and Mr. Ernest Layton, invited many of their friends from the industry, the trade and the radio press to a luncheon at the Grange restaurant and a conducted tour of the new premises. Also present was a very old friend of the Sproxton family, Mr. B. Mund Hopen from Bergen, Norway, who was in charge of the Norwegian shipping mission during World War II. In a short after-lunch speech, Mr. Sproxton welcomed the guests, thanked them for their attendance and added that he hoped they would forgive the digression, but as it was St. George's Day, he felt he might be forgiven for referring to the last war. In his opinion, three things saved our country from defeat, radar, the tenacity and courage of the RAF, and the Norwegian tanker fleet, the third largest in the world which came over to Britain. He ended by proposing a toast to Her Majesty the Queen and to the Norwegian royal family. Mr. Sebiston of Radio Spares said how delighted he was to be present, and wished home radio every success. Mr. Hopen thanked Mr. Sproxton for his kind remarks and added that he had been living in this country for 40 years and remarked how happy Norwegians are when in London. Mr. F. Bennett, editor of Practical Electronics, said how well home radio had looked after the needs of the amateur radio hobbyists as a whole. Finally, Mr. A.J. Crow, representing the National Publicity Company, said he would like to speak as one of the non-VIPs present, remarking that he had been associated with home radio for many years and had found them such friendly people. This, he added, was exemplified by the gathering that day, and he felt in view of this they should change their business name to Homely Radio. From the London Gazette, the 16th of June, 1982. That it has been proved to the satisfaction of the company that this company cannot, by reason of its liabilities, continue its business, and that it is advisable that the same should be wound up, and that the company be wound up, and that Keith John Chapman of 12 Pudding Lane, London EC3R8AB, be and is hereby appointed as liquidator of the company for the purpose of such voluntary winding up. A. Sproxton, Chairman.